Let's build this three-pole DC motor. In the previous video, we put together a two-pole motor. If you've not watched that video yet, I recommend that you do so before continuing. The two-pole motor worked well, but I want to make some improvements. First of all, the brush has made a lot of sparks, which causes oxidation over time. That's why they look burned. The oxide doesn't conduct electricity, so eventually this would cause the motor to quit working if enough of it gets built up to break electrical contact. This problem is fairly easy to fix. We'll be using proper brushes made from carbon, or graphite to be more specific. It's a much better material for making contact to copper compared to having a metal brush. The second problem with our two-pole motor was that it wasn't self-starting. You had to give it a spin to get it going. The reason is that the brushes are not in continuous electrical contact with the commutator. When the brushes rub against the commutator, current flows and the motor has torque. But when the motor has rotated 90 degrees, there's no longer any current flowing and the motor doesn't have any torque. It continues to spin only through rotational inertia. The brushes again make contact and the process continues, but the mechanical power ends up being pulsed. We'll fix this first problem by making a three-pole motor instead of a two-pole motor. The advantage of having three poles instead of two is that the brushes are always in contact with at least two of the three commutation segments. This means that the motor will be self-starting. Let's get started in building it. We'll be using the same base design as with the two-pole motor. Just like in our two-pole motor, we'll make the commutator first. Let's saw off 13 millimeters of the plastic tube and 23 millimeters from the copper pipe. We'll cut the copper pipe into four equal strips and use three of them to make the commutator segments around the tube this time. Then we'll use epoxy putty, run the shaft through the center of the putty, and let the epoxy dry. We're going to need three strips of metal, 3.6 centimeters long and two centimeters wide, bent in the middle by 60 degrees so that they all fit back to back to make the three poles. A three-pole motor is slightly less efficient than a two-pole motor, and I want to err on the side of having sufficient torque rather than just having the motor spin fast. So I'm going to be using slightly thinner wire this time, 28 gauge, and we'll be giving 200 turns per pole. Each commutator segment should lie midway between two poles. As I mentioned before, we'll be replacing our stainless steel coffee can brushes with carbon brushes. These are really cheap. They cost me 15 cents a piece. These are 13 by 9 by 6 millimeters, and they have springs attached to them to help hold them against a commutator in a commercial motor. We won't need the spring because our existing stainless steel strips are springy enough. I'm just going to use some epoxy putty to glue a carbon brush onto each of our two strips. This isn't the direction the brush is meant to be pointed, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be making one more change in design from our two-pole motor in order to help make the three-pole motor self-starting. You might notice that in the two-pole configuration, the magnets attract the stainless steel parts of the armature. We can spread out our magnetic flux lines a bit by replacing our magnet holders with one big arch. We cut a strip four centimeters wide by 161 millimeters long and then folded it in half and then along the dotted lines. After we got it screwed in place, we can immediately notice that the rotor turns smoothly when the power is off. Let's test out our motor with the DC power supply. It starts spinning as soon as I turn it on. If we turn up the voltage, then the speed of the motor will increase. If I switch polarity, then the motor will spin in the opposite direction. After we let it spin for a while, the brushes will get worn in a little bit and you'll end up with graphite spread around the commutator. In the two-pole motor, the dark color was oxidation, but this time the black color is just graphite dust, which is completely different and this doesn't cause any problems. Eventually, of course, these brushes will wear out and that happens with any brushed DC motor. Let's try the motor with just a 9-volt battery. Look, it doesn't start spinning unless I give it a head start. Why did it work with the DC power supply and not the battery? Well, it's because the motor needs extra torque to get started. 
and more torque requires more current at a given voltage. This battery can't quite give us the current that we need. To solve this problem, we can put a capacitor in parallel with the battery. I'm going to be using a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. When the motor is off, the capacitor will charge up to 9 volts. And when I turn the motor on, the current will come from the capacitor rather than the battery. See, it has no trouble starting now. This is actually a really common use of capacitors. And quite often when you see a motor installed commercially, you'll find a capacitor installed alongside it. In the next video, we'll measure the torque of our three-pole motor and get some idea of how well this motor performs quantitatively.